the, the claims are the only part of are the part of the patent that actually in, uh, dictates what is covered by the patent. Uh, you can kind of they're a, a um, they're a textual outline of what the sort of boundaries of the intellectual property space that is protected are. So you can kind of, if you think of intellectual property in terms of like ranch land, you know, rancher number one has a fence around what he owns. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in patent speak, his claims would describe in words what the boundaries are that he's protected. Okay. Um, in order for you to get that patent, your those words that you that you use to describe your little fenced off area have to be specific enough that the prior art, which means other things that were done prior to um, things that had a, a things were in the public domain prior to your filing mm -hmm. uh, of your patent, uh, you need to be able to show that your little area that you're trying to claim has not been done. And none of that's covered by something that's been done before. Okay. So you know, ideally, you'd like to write your claim very broadly and cover lots and lots of stuff. Uh, because then you, there's, if you have a very broad patent, you have a lot of potential infringers. It's a very powerful patent. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, it's you've got all this space that you're trying to hold, and it only takes somebody finding one other thing that's inside of that original space to say, "Hey, that patent's not valid." Okay. So there's a little mm -hmm. bit of a tension there between you want a you know nice people will say, oh, "I have a nice strong patent. It's very broad." Well, it, it, you may have a lot of infringers, but you also have some risk that it's not valid. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the other side of that is it's very narrow, meaning it's got a lot of detail in the claims. The claims go on for a long time. Um, it may not, I mean, I have as many infringers, but it's it may be much harder for somebody to show that something in the space that I'm protecting was um, covered before. Okay. So, um, and there's a way, so the claims, typically it's, it's a little bit, uh, sometimes I get inventors who look and they go, oh, this claim's not very long. It doesn't cover anything. Said, mm -hmm. Well. It, uh, the, the breadth of a claim is inversely proportional to how long it is. The, the more words there are, and the more details, the more sort of you've you've cut into what space you have. Because okay. for someone to not infringe a claim, they just have to show that they don't do one of the things that's required by the claim. So okay. if your claim requires somebody to do uh, you know operations A, B, C, and D, and they say, well, I do A, B, and C, but I don't do D. They don't infringe. Okay. Um, on the uh, and again, if uh, you want to show that the patent's invalid. That if you want to say that claim's invalid, you would have to find something in the prior art that either makes each of those elements, A, B, C, D, and E, or A, B, C, and D, um, has to show that they were done before and that they were either known or obvious. Okay. It was a, a, a trivial modification of what was done before. 